Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. I was out at the uh, garden center the other day and I found uh, this Annabelle hydrangea for $4. It's a decent sized shrub. It's in pretty good shape. They had quite a few, some were looking, they had a lot of scorched leaves um, and very spindly like this, but uh, overall fairly healthy. Just, you know, when uh, shrubs like this get grown close together in, this was at a, like a big box store the big box stores they don't really know always what they're doing when they're taking care of plants and so sometimes they just don't they get pushed too close together maybe not watered the way they should be or whatnot and uh, they can just get damaged and, and look spindly and unhealthy ish uh, so anyways they just don't sell and now it's the end of the season uh, where I am I'm in Saskatchewan Canada you know we have about three weeks until our average last frost uh, it's the uh, middle of August here right now. Hey Buster, you wanna come say hi? Yeah, you can come say hi. Hi, good dog. Yeah, good dog. <laughs> Do you like that shrub? Yeah, good dog. So um, anyways, the garden centers are, are trying to get rid of these plants. Uh, so they have them reduced in price for a uh, quick sale. And $4 for a shrub, careful now, careful. You coming through? Four dollars for a shrub like this. I mean, often in my area, you'd be looking at like fifteen to twenty dollars for a shrub like this. So even though it's not uh, nice and full and picture perfect, I had a look around. Picked this one as the best one. It has fresh growth coming up from the roots. The growth, the the leaves that are on the plant here actually look pretty healthy. Like I said, some were pretty scorched. But these look pretty healthy. The new growth, the stems, everything looks healthy. It doesn't look like it has any bugs or disease or anything. So for $4, this is certainly worth, um, for me, picking up and trying to put out my landscape and uh, see what happens with it next year. I'm trying to find a spot to go and to fit another one so I can go back and get another one. Uh, but this is just a little reminder of, you know, don't forget to be checking around at those, uh, those garden sales. Uh, for especially like perennials is what I was actually looking for was perennials but perennials shrubs trees they can all still be going into the ground you want to leave about I, I say about four four to six weeks before the ground freezes uh, shrubs you can actually put in and trees can go in until the ground is frozen pretty much but perennials need a bit more time to, to settle in uh, but it's a great time to be getting those discount plants if you can this blooms on new wood so I know it should be really good to just plant in the ground right now and uh, have it come back and look good next year. You wanna make sure it doesn't have diseases or pests that you're bringing into your yard. And that's why it hasn't sold because it's, it's sick that way. But if it's just because it was maybe not cared for the best and so didn't grow and look as lush and full as the rest, uh, now's a great time to pick them up. You know, Saskatchewan, Canada, most perennial plants uh, will die to the ground and some shrubs like the hydrangea will as well and they're just gonna have to come back from the roots every year or from low down anyways and um, so buying them looking a little bit scraggly like this isn't a big deal. So I'm not gonna show you how to plant this. Um, there's lots of videos about how to plant shrubs and trees and things. Basically I'm just gonna be digging a hole that's two to three times the size of the root ball in width and just going down that same depth as uh, what the pot is here. I'll make sure that I'm not burying the crown of the plant. Uh, the only thing I'll do differently than I might do um, earlier in the season is I won't be putting any fertilizer in with uh, this plant in the planting hole. I have good soil. I don't need to really do much to amend my soil in the area this is going. And I don't want to get too much richness right around and get this plant trying to force lots of growth right now because uh, it's not going to be ready for winter then. I want it to be, you know, slowing down and going dormant naturally. So that's why I don't do extra fertilizer this time of year. I will top dress with a bit of um, compost and I'll be making sure to make sure it's nicely watered. Like it's really hot right now. So I'll be watering this every day, but it'll be better in the ground with some ground moisture than trying to keep it watered in this little pot. So that's what I'll be doing with it. Uh, the spot I'm putting it is along my um, east fence of my yard. 
in a, a perennial bed I have there. And so it'll get, it actually will get a little bit of morning sun and the way these, this ash tree actually behind me is, it should get shade in the heat of the afternoon and that will be good for this plant being an Annabelle hydrangea. These grow about four to six feet wide, four to five feet tall. Um, I find hydrangeas for me so far haven't gotten to their full size. Uh, it could just be that they're, they're still fairly young in my yard. Could be that they just don't put on that much growth in a short season, I'm not sure. But uh, I'll be sticking it back there. I'll make sure it has enough room to grow up that way. There's actually a couple of peonies back there. Um, and they will need to move, especially as this gets bigger, because it will shade them. But uh, the peonies, because of this ash tree and how much it's grown in the last few years, uh, they needed to move anyways. But that will wait until spring, I think, or next year sometime anyways, because I'll probably move them into this bed behind me and it's full right now. So I'll have to make a plan for that. So back in this area is where it's going to be going. So hopefully you can see there, there's a dwarf Alberta spruce, a peony, there's some snapdragons, another peony, uh, there's some obedient plant there and another dwarf Alberta spruce. And if you look at the back there, you can see that clematis there. And so I'm going to bump um, that, the hydrangea just out in front of that clematis. And I'm okay if that clematis, once that clematis will get uh, too shaded out and it won't grow there, that'll be all right with me. It's a very, it's almost a weedy clematis. I have it in other parts of my yard, just randomly volunteering. And uh, it's actually pretty shady in those spots. So I'm not too worried about it, but if uh, it loses vigor after a while, that'll be all right. I think the, the hydrangea would be nicer. So like I said, I need to give it to that room. So it grows four to, five, four to six feet wide, so I'll give it a good three and a half feet from the fence to the center of the root ball and that should be enough room and then I've measured out so it has enough room to spread that wide if it ever wants to between the spruces and other than the peonies everything in here is annual so that should give it lots of room there might be a little aster down way down in there with those snapdragons but I'll just pop it out and put it somewhere else if I need to and like I said these peonies will probably move next year I'll just have to figure out the right spot for them because I don't want to move them twice it takes them so long to bloom again that's the plan. Okay, so I got it all planted and I'm just going to fill, I don't know how well you can tell, but I just kind of made a little divot in the ground, a little kind of wall around the outside perimeter of the planting hole to hold some water in. Like I said, it's really hot these days. Uh, we're getting to the 30s Celsius and hydrangeas already like to have a pretty, they like a good amount of water already uh, and they prefer not to be, you know, in really, really hot temperatures unless they have a good amount of watering. So I want to make sure that it gets lots of water. So I'll be filling this hole up. I'll probably come through two to three times a day, just watching to see um, how the leaves are looking. If it's looking like it's drooping, um, then I might need to give it three times a day. If it's looking okay with just two, then I'll just leave it at two. And uh, I will come in and top dress with some compost uh, just to, to get a nice layer on here when it's settled in. And uh, that's all there is to it. I don't think I mentioned uh, the Annabelle hydrangea is hardy to negative 40. So if you live in zone three, like I do, then this is a great shrub for you to, to try because um, as long as it's in a good, good location with uh, at least three to four hours of sun and uh, decent amounts of moisture, it should do well for you. Uh, once 
It can grow in almost any soil, but it doesn't want to be sitting waterlogged or dry right out. So just keep that in mind when you're picking a location for it. So I'm just going to make sure this is good and wet and good and uh, settled in here. If uh, when I fill this hole with water, if it sinks down anywhere, then I'll fill that up with soil just to make sure that uh, the roots are, there's no air pockets in the roots. And uh, I'll just be keeping an eye on it for the next few weeks uh, until, until it goes dormant for the winter. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.